So now what Matt and the other gentleman, I don't know his name, is doing is basically they're trimming the vacuform to the edge of that, that yellow form is that's what you want to capture. The clay on the sides is just to fill in the gap so it doesn't undercut. The actual piece is going to be trimmed right on the edge of whatever your vacuform buck is. So this is Leanne and what she's doing is basically, you know, with a marker, she's etching out where the, the, the line is um, from the sculptor to the, the vacuform. And since it's being a, a, a clear piece, it's kind of hard to, to gauge. And if you cut it incorrectly, you'll have a huge gap in both sides, so. So I mean, you can see how many pulls are made. Like when the skin of the cosmonaut falls off of it, I'd like it to feel like it's going to, you know, not just look like a glass chandelier. Okay. Well, that's, what, that's what, something I'm going to leave to Dave then. I guess you want to talk to him about how this is going to puppeteer before I start building some sort of support. Right. I, I do. I mean, I think it's safe to say that it'll need some fiberglass reinforcement up around the top. Yeah, so, definitely. Right. It's going so to need that, but I, I, uh, I'm wondering, whatever we're connecting to, that needs a glass to that. Yes. I just want to wait till we find out what it's being made out of before we... So, can, I'm, I'm just saying... I've got stuff in there. Oh, how delightful. I'm just, I'm just saying that this will definitely, right now, need to have a reinforcement of fiberglass so that we can grab it. Whatever Dave says, that's, that needs to happen. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Okay. Does it sound like you're saying? Before I start putting fiberglass on it and it gets built up and built up and built up, I want to find out what we're mechanizing it with so I can put either a speed rail fitting or a piece of acrylic on there or something. I want to wait until we find what we're doing it with before I fiberglass. That's fine. I don't think you really necessarily have to because because I'm not I'm not talking about changing the shape of anything. No, I know. I'm still talking about leaving an opening before we get something down into it. That's lock it off. But I don't know that I would that I need to have a speed rail fitting worked into that, but that's fine. We'll discuss it with Dave, I guess, because Dave's the boss of you or something. I'm just thinking ahead before I've got to I know, pedal you backwards like I, you like me to do. Uh -huh. it's, it's not hard. If we do a cast it, but it, it can be cut polypropylene. Yeah. You hate that, but it I, can. I just really do. <laughs> I know you do. Well, you do. Yeah, you do cut polypropylene. I mean, does it, does it two axes or one axis? What if it's two? I don't know, I haven't done one. Okay. okay, so let's say it's cut polypropylene. That shape, right, is upside down right now. It's got a hole in it. We want to fill that with water as part of the thing, right? So, right, so that inside that moving tentacle mechanism, whatever that organ is that's going to be moving around, squiggling around inside it, is inside water, right? Okay. So it's got a lensing effect, all that. That thing's going to be pretty heavy, like, close to five gallons of water, right? So what I'm thinking is that we fiberglass them a collar, like a top reinforced fiberglass piece that has like a couple of uh, eye hooks or something on it that we can hang two cables so that I can potentially you know, get this kind of movement or let it be flexible, right? Do you see any problem with that? With what, leaving a hole open so that we can feed a tentacle mechanism that cables. I don't. I, is that um, is that vacuum plastic? Yes, that's been reinforced inside with 787. Oh. I um, mean, if you, it's upside down. He's got more in it, but feel it. It's still 30 pounds right. of water. So it's like, yes. Uh, just, I just, what do you think? What, what do we need to do to make that 30 pounds of water? Um, so that it, it holds it. I'm just going to keep it upside down now. Okay. So it's <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know. I don't, I don't know at what point the plastic's going to say, I can't take this. I crack it. Boom. Because it'll happen fast, but it might not happen at all. He has filled it up. Yeah, I saw him. Okay. So I was like, I think it's a... Uh, so, is there, is there anything... The only other thing you can do is, is uh, fiberglass the inside of it in order to get some sort of cross weave structure, which is, takes the clearness. Now, how about this? What if he, just even on the surface, if he does a band all the way around it and up so that it's a cradle, basically, and we just, we just fog that to be more opaque right That there. would help. I mean, how many, 
How many days does that shoot? Like, would you just get done in two hours? Yeah, I mean, it has to hang there for a couple of days. Probably. I would say... I mean, we'll empty it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's it's like, awesome we'll do, do whatever you can to make it right. structurally happy. Okay. Like, that's what we'll do. But the ring on the top of it, that, that ring should be intertwined with the, the ring that you're talking about hanging it from. That should be connected fiberglass wise to this part. So you're just not hanging on this upper lip where it's all just connected. Connected fiberglass wise. You know how you're saying connect that whole seam to the fiberglass? Oh, yes. Yeah, that would be tied into that ring so it's at least cradled. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We put a collar around the top. Yeah, so you have right part point it, here and then, and then that. Right. At least you're supported that way. Yes. But I don't know if the sides are going to say, yeah. But at least we get something. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, but you want a tiny tentacle in there? Polyethylene? I'll throw, um, if I can throw Sarah on it. She's good at soldering. Obviously, you need to be able to pull it, have pull points on it. Um, Give a shot. It should be two axis, because otherwise it's just doing that, right? Right. So, what is that? You just, you just notch it one way and then connect it and then run another and connect it. If you want, if you have the bigger polypropylene, you can use that because if, it, if it's better for leverage to have a fatter piece. Yeah, it's always better to be home. Make it fatter. You see how much space? I'm imagining that the, that the thing inside is going to be about that big and it's just going to be bubble wrap weird, bubble wrap with pieces of filamenty fabric coming off of it so oh, that the, it floats. Oh, there are tentacles hanging there? And there's a tentacle inside it so that it, and we'll just chop it up so that we get the two-way movement. Yeah. What I do have are the little, uh, they're the little mounts for doing like a, a single axis tongue mechanism. Mm -hmm. And that's a two axis bend like this, mm -hmm. but I have a lot of those parts. You could have there's multiple two axis things, paddle, mm -hmm. curvy things. It does, uh, it does set up to have a servo. Oh, well, we, we're not going to servo this. You, can, you can servo it. You can, we can put it on small. It ultimately, you know, if you can work over. But you're saying thing. instead of having having a, a, a two way tentacle, it's two flaps that are doing that. Yeah, but we can. They have two points of thing. You could actually have a, a, a single sided tentacle button. that would do that type of stuff. Oh. I'm having difficulty understanding what you're talking about, but if you want to pull it out and show it to me, I'll know immediately. Okay. Not the what? tentacle. What? Playing my pen. What? No, tentacle. it's a it's a it's a tongue type of tongue mechanism. Okay. Let's <laughs> uh, maybe say two four of the big ones and then two each of these small ones. I'd, I'd do a couple more. Okay. Are we really low on? Uh, uh, it's just we, we bought them in. Okay. To start with, so we can okay, then, then, it. then we can. Okay, if you want to, as long as we can do it at some point in the future. Yeah. We might need more. Okay, great. That's fine. Great. But if you're fine with these, not they're two axes, so um, if they're mounted on either side of something, I think that's kind of big. Yes. No, that's not big. But what it is is. Hey, what am I looking at? Oh, I see. You just take two, and yeah. that, that's what makes it two axes. Yeah, and then because you have the inside ones. That would be for the end, and then you stop the upper ones on the upper side, so you get this one to lift, this one to push down, so you get okay. You get an S curve on it, and this would be mounted it, on just thin uh, nylon. Is that is the bulk of that sufficient to move in water to move uh, something oh yeah. around? Be, I mean, okay. it's such a short run. Yeah. Um, and th this just requires somebody to sit there and drill holes in a piece of a flat stock. And and we can space these out as much as we want if we want a little more length. Um. You do it more length, it gets kind of weird. Mm -hmm. I would say it gets kind of ratchety. Keep it at, yeah, kind of keep it an inch. Because what happens oh, okay. is that wire wants to break. So an inch, the, uh, an inch apart. Yeah. So so this apart. is this is going to end up being. Or you can make it shorter. But I have all these pieces. That's the, you know, yeah, that's enough. great. Okay. So and this is better than polypropylene. Um. Yeah. Is yeah. It, is it quicker? Is it quicker than polypropylene? I'm willing to give it a shot. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just heating up these uh, edges of this material that I had to slush inside. This whole thing had to fit or had to hold water. So you're talking about that volume of water in two vacuform shells, the thing will just blow apart under its own weight.